with Betty. We're just heading back now, heading off home. Just had my lunch down here at Stivian's Lake, and the lake's over there. Nice little spot. Come and sit. And uh, yeah, so heading back now. So just heading back, just been to Stivian's Lake, had my lunch. Pretty awesome place actually. So many good places to come and visit when I'm down there, you know, away from I mean it weren't that busy there, there's a few people there, but not you know, there's a little campsite behind it, you so you can actually camp there. I think they take motorhomes and caravans as well. Might be with a caravan and camping club, I don't know. But be an ideal little spot to have be there. Because it's sort of pretty central to everything down this part of Cornwall. Oh, pick my wife weren't with me, there's a plant store there. Be stopping there, no doubt. Look like that Agapanthus. That's just, I think that's just butchers there, slaughterhouse. Nice properties around here. Yeah, I find uh, I just find them bikers a friendly punch actually to be honest. All a bit mad like me. We've all got our own little quirks and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know if you see the coastline over the other side there, you can just about see it in the distance. You might not be able to pick it up very well. So this is sort of like coming into the back end of Red Roof. There's old Buzzard there, he looks a bit of a straggly old thing up on the telegraph pole. Yeah, so we're sort of skirting round now, coming down in towards Red Roof. Hometown of Richard Trevodic. Trevodic. I can't even say it. The, Corn the Cornishmen are going to go mad at me. Richard Trevodic. Trevodic? I don't know. I can't pronounce it. I'm, I'm crap. I'm sorry. I do apologise. But he... Uh, I 
I think he invented, invented steam engines as well. He was very heavily involved with um, the mining industry, steam engines, etc., etc., and railways as well. I think, if I remember rightly, he was one of the first ones to invent a powered ra railway. I think something like that. And there's lots of. I mean, this used to be such a mega rich town. This was Red Ruth. It's got a bit of a bad rep now, but it's. Uh, I don't know why it's got a bad rep. Really, it's just a. You know, it's an old mining town. But it was sort of the centre of everything there. It employed thousands and thousands of people were employed here, above and below ground from the mines. Massive engineering factories. really nice railway station actually quite an old one I think it's uh, they keep it in good order See what the exhaust on this Enfield sounds lovely. Just popping and stuff like that. <clears throat> Getting warm now. Yeah, lots of remains of old industrial buildings all overgrown now. I mean, it'd be ideal for housing. You know, then short of housing, aren't we? Lots of brownfield sites here for housing. Could be used. The trouble is, there's no work. <laughs> That's the downside of these towns. There's plenty of places to build within the town. But, um, there's a lack of jobs. here again just come down the A30 I've just come off the A30 now heading towards St Dennis um, not far from home now so just doing a few lanes as I head back into home I do love this little bike though I'll tell you what Lose a bit on the hill. I've got, I'm a big fella. I'm six foot two. I'm about six, seventeen stone at the moment, near enough. So I've got to lose a couple of stone. <laughs> but um, this bike performs brilliantly. I've, I've just come down the A30, dual carriageway, 
sitting here at 70 miles, 65, 70 miles an hour, most of the way home without any problem whatsoever. One or two steep hills, I lose a bit of speed. Um, but that's it really. Handling is superb. On the bike. Because it's got such a low down torque, if you get it wrong and you're on gears, you know, I think I was in fourth or fifth gear then, I just wound it up and come around the corner, you know. Railway crossing here. And also, what I like about it, it still gives you that big bike feeling. Because I, I, I made my mistake, if, but if you compare it to like a Triumph Bonneville, obviously you've got better performance on a Triumph Bonneville, I'm not, I'm not disputing that, of course you have. But size, the size of the bike, and me being a big fella, I think I find this more comfortable. Be a bit careful for it's a bit tight, and you do get some idiots come flying along here. Oh, I tell you what, the burble from that exhaust. I know some people don't like a noisy exhaust, but I do. I used to have a Honda VTR and it had like nearly a full race exhaust on it and uh, none of the neighbours actually complained I did a, but my wife sort of made me near enough push the bike down the road before I started it up I didn't but you know she reckoned she could hear me coming from about five miles away and if I started the bike up in the drive I'm sure the house was shaking <laughs> that was some mean beast that was that VTR But those days are over. I'm not. I'm not. Don't miss them. I'm. I'm quite happy now. Just bimbling around, cruising around the lanes, exploring. That's what I. I enjoy. I enjoy it whether it's on a push bike or walking or on a motorcycle. I don't think you can beat it. Just, you know, you can see so much. And I'm not saying you couldn't do it on a sports bike, of course you can come down these places with a sports bike, it'd just be a bit awkward because you're not going to be going to be able to go so fast. And, it's a, and obviously if it's a bigger bike, like a Harley or something, I'm not saying you can't do it, of course you can do it. And if you're on holiday you would do it. But uh, you're coming around these bends and you've got like all shit and all sorts all over the road. You can't go fast. So you don't really need a big heavy bike there, you know. I was chatting to some chaps uh, on their monkey bikes. They've got monkey bikes and a Grom. Well, one of them had a Grom, obviously, and the rest had monkey bikes. You know, they were sort of saying about smaller capacity bikes. Yeah, everything's cheaper really as well, you know, you, you, your insurance, your road tax and fuel, servicing, and you can have as much fun, well I can anyway. And the way I look at it, this gives me smiles for miles.
Yeah, I don't ever come home and think, oh, this is crap, you know? Oh, this is going to be crap now because I've got to bloody open and close the bloody, bloody bleeding gate now. Let's see if I can, I don't know if I better do it without. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I don't have to get off. Well, that closed it. I often come for walks on here on Gosmore. I think I said to so I was speaking to someone who said yeah, I would like a classic bike, an older bike and I'm not saying I won't get one, I might get one but what, what this, this little 350's give me is classic looks with a bit of modern technology yeah I'm not dripping oil all over the place <coughs> touch wood and generally it starts, stops and goes without issue and they're so cheap at the moment, I mean it's because of all the business and stuff that was going on with Enfields the changing dealerships and stuff like that there's a lot of bikes floating about that are quite cheap and you can pick them up relatively cheap and I think they're unbelievable value really to be honest with you I would not hesitate to recommend someone getting a Royal Enfield the only thing I would say probably with a Royal Enfield especially the lower capacity bikes you know anything under the 450s sort of CC if you're doing lots of motorway miles then you probably want something with a little bit more poke but apart from that especially like if you're an older lady or gentleman like me who want a bit of a classic looking bike you know, it's just bloody awesome they are. And I've got my Himalayan, I love my Himalayan as well, but I think this just about pips it really. And I will be keeping both of them. It don't it seems little point in selling them. either one of them so, so I'm definitely keeping the two Enfields and if I can find a cheap enough one an older one I might try and buy myself an old classic Royal Enfield just for shows and stuff like that perhaps I do quite enjoy going to like the shows and rallies so and that's what I'm going to probably do long term and I will keep the pan European for the time being although I do, I love it, it's a lovely bike to ride, super smooth I just don't know if I'm going to use it it's, uh, it's the, you know, is, there is a cost to it, obviously you know, your road tax is what I think, uh, I know 12, 15 pound a month or something, I don't know, 150 a year. It's quite heavy on fuel, insurance is a bit higher. But, you know, it sits there, I could saw it in the winters, but I want to use it for a couple of rallies, so I'll see how I'll get on with it. Again, it was a cheap bike, so.
and I'm not into spending loads of my money on my motorcycles 